what's good y'all it's your boy ross back again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 matches wwe doesn't want you to see parts fun known uh we're gonna check this one out i know he has uh like these um these booking series or whatnot where he books certain characters certain wrestling characters i know they're kind of long so um we're gonna i'm gonna try to check it out sometime relatively soon i know you guys have been wanting me to check out his uh his uh booking series of like different wrestlers and i've seen them before off camera they're pretty interesting i just know those videos are kind of long so when i have the time i actually will check them out for you guys we'll just you know do a sit down reaction and just kind of go through those videos and you know have some dialogue in the, in the comment section and on the video itself but appreciate all the love and support roll to 60k and let's get right into this one WWE have produced a lot of wrestling matches in their time and they'd very much like to sit you down and make sure you watch each and every one of them yep. clockwork orange style more wrestling more get it in your eyeballs after all that is why they made their own streaming service stuffed to the brim with their own back catalog although you could argue that WWE's current performance on Peacock might mean they don't actually want you to watch any of their matches live anymore WWE are their own biggest fans of course especially when it comes to their history documentaries playlists top tens all about their favorite classic wrestling moment however there are some wrestling matches from wwe's past that don't quite gel with how wwe would like to be presented today matches mm -hmm. that the biased historian that is wwe would very much prefer none of us ever saw again i'm adam hailing from parts fun known and here are the 10 matches wwe don't want you to see but we obviously want you to see all of our videos and the best way to make sure you see all of our videos is to like and subscribe, subscribe to parts fun known just click that button video. click we'll it down don't below. please click the button though number 10 roddy piper versus bad news brown ah yes the blackface match. WWE has actually dabbled in blackface a number of times and now that I've said I really think dabbled is absolutely the wrong word but sod it, they did it not me. There's the infamous DX segment yeah. where they came out dressed as the nation of domination and like way to prove the nation right about how shit race relations were in WWE back yeah. in the 90s doing their job for them there. There's a jaw-droppingly awful match between Goldust and Flash Funk where Goldie does blackface. Oh Jesus Christ, it's a uh. huge car crash. And then there's this blackface on the grandest stage of the morning. A match notorious for getting WWE in trouble with Peacock on day one of their partnership, where Rowdy Roddy Piper used blackface as, I guess, mind games for his match against Bad News Brown at WrestleMania 6, daubing half his face and body in black body paint. WWE are so committed to you not seeing this throwback that it's been cut from the Mania 6 wow. broadcast on both Peacock and the WWE Network. Jesus wept. Ugh. Number nine, wow. Deborah versus Sable. That. Today, a lot of these I'm probably not going to know, or I may know some of these, but a lot of these I'm probably not going to know. So this is going to be all in new information to me. WWE cares about women's wrestling, a fact that might have passed you by if you saw that god-awful belt swap segment on SmackDown, but apparently they do. And hell, despite my sarcasm, which I cannot turn off, by the way, so just imagine what it's like to be me every day, WWE books its women's championships like big deals. WrestleMania 37, the main event of WrestleMania 35, by and large, the belts mean something, which is why WWE would probably like you to forget about all the ways it pissed on the women's championship back in the Attitude Era. First yeah, off, Harvey did. Whippleman won the thing. Fabulous Moolah won it in her 70s and a ludicrous match and yep. then there's this an evening gown match on raw for the belt where sable won the match by stripping deborah down to her bra and panties but then commissioner and horn dog sean michael said that actually deborah won the match and the belt because she got naked first perhaps a single worst title change in all of wwe history and maybe the biggest indictment to wwe's women's division of the time number what? eight trish stratus and bradshaw versus jackie gator and chris nowinski oh this oh 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 Oh, goody. This match is a train wreck and a hell of a fly in the ointment of WWE's presentation of Trish Stratus as one of the yeah. greatest women's wrestlers of all time. Jackie Gator was fresh off tough enough and nowhere near ready to be on live television having wrestling matches, which actually, looking back, makes this whole thing seem actually really quite dangerous. Trish was still two years away from making WWE branded history by main eventing Raw with Lita and oh, this match mm -hmm. is just the drizzling sh**. Stratus and Gator missed time so many moves they might as well have been in different time zones. The finish involves <laughs> something that was supposed to be a top rope bulldog but end up being a top rope very light pat on the head it takes a certain amount of wrestling crapulence for one of the commentators to say mercifully it's over when the bell oh rings and that goes God. double when that commentator is jim ross one of the industry's biggest pros or back uh, then anyway easily one of the most commonly named worst matches in wwe history damn. that's not even taking into account the fact this match also features chris nowinski a man who causes wwe no end of pr nightmares by being one of the biggest public figures to draw links between wrestling and cte in the years following mm -hmm. his departure from the company number six. yeah 
Some of these matches I did not know, and uh, probably not going to be checking these matches out anyway. Seven, The Undertaker versus The Big Boss Man. It's because it features a man being hanged live on TV. I that's think... something the Victorians would look at and think, oh, that's a bit much, and they bloody loved I murder. Think I it's a match this, and moment infamous in all the wrong ways. This. It was the first famously terrible Hell in the Cell match, although there had actually been two sh Cell matches on Raw before this, which no one remembers. It's one of Grim Dark Grim Mark's top three worst matches of his whole streak, and once more with feeling, after the match was over, they ran a segment which involved The Big Boss Man being hanged, and I guess killed yeah. live on TV with just bloody loads of children watching, some of whom in the crowd who no doubt had just a bunch of questions for their parents. What do you I say to I, little Timmy when he asks you why? I do think I remember hearing about that. I don't think I ever saw it, but I think people have mentioned it. That's just like, uh, yeah, what? <laughs> Undertaker just murdered a man in front of you. I mean, uh, it certainly does appear that way, son, but uh, to look at it another way, off to bed, it's super grim <laughs> and horrible and evidently WWE agree because even when they did include the match on the Undertaker's Streak DVD, they cut the footage right after the bell. Number six, Had John to. Cena versus Kurt Angle. This one's a little sillier, but with the benefit of hindsight, you can absolutely bet that WWE would have liked to have <laughs> never booked this match. See, a cornerstone of Big Match John's Big Match character is that he never gives up, and you know mm -hmm. he doesn't because he wrote it on a little towel. You can't write lies on a little towel. It's against Hitchhiker's Law. True to his little towel words, Johnny C <laughs> would back that up in the ring, not once ever tapping out in a wrestling mm -hmm. match in what's almost been 20 years nope. for real nearly two full decades and the man has never tapped which must yep. really annoy wwe when you consider that john cena has actually tapped out on camera not once not twice but thrice and this match cena versus angle that was on pay-per-view at no mercy look Look yep. at John Cena tapping out. Yep. Look at him giving up. This isn't the only time Cena has tapped out, of course. Also mm -hmm. submitting to Chris Jericho on SmackDown in 2002 and Chris Benoit in 2003. Mm -hmm. But they will all be tucked away underneath a mountain yep, of will. little towels, all of which forever tainted by Kurt Angle. And I don't like how I phrase that. Number five, Big Show versus Batista. Talk about a wholesale rejection of everything your company stands for. Now, it's no secret that WWE ECW didn't work. Hell, he WWE did said as much when Vince cancelled the show live on Raw. However, WWE would very much like to project the narrative that the reason ECW failed was because ECW itself was terrible. It's all the extremists' fault. Nothing to do with mm -hmm. Vince McMahon do rag champion or firing yep. Paul Heyman or matches like Big Show versus Batista. Oh, oh yeah. man, it's a pure Schadenfreude train wreck. The August 1st, 2006 episode of ECW was filmed at the Hammerstein Ballroom, a pretty important venue yep. for old school ECW fans. The main event of that show was ECW champion Big Show versus Batista. Two men who both epitomize the bigger is bigger model of sports entertainment and couldn't have been more the antithesis of classic yep. ECW if they'd come down to the ring carrying big signs that said careful now and down with this sort of thing. What happens next is ECW fans spending about 20 minutes bluntly informing WWE that their product is bad and they should feel bad with chants of boring, change the channel and a never ending background chorus of boos that made it sound like the match was happening. <clears throat> and this is one of those things that crowd, especially in that venue, they're going to voice their opinion. They're going to voice it, and there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you could possibly say to sway their opinion. They know what they want, and they didn't want that. ECW was doomed from the start once Vince McMahon got his hands over it. He, he, just, he turned it into what he wanted it to be, not what it should have been. In a field of a thousand cows. Am I so out of touch, asks Vince? No. It's the ECW fans who are wrong. The Number four, The Rock champ. versus Mankind. Just Bad a little names. bit of a heads up, pun definitely not intended. The rest of this list gets a bit serious from yeah. here on out. We've already mentioned earlier in the video that WWE had to come to terms with its own actions when it comes to the long lasting effects of concussions uh -huh. on its wrestlers. Frankly, I in any concussion lawsuit against the big dub, you only ever need to provide this one bit of evidence, this match, because yep. it's a snuff film. At the 1999 Rumble, Rock fought Mankind in an I Quit match, and throughout yep. the course of the match, The Rock hits this was, I'm not even gonna lie to you, this is one of the most brutal matches ever in WWE history. When I say the man, I, I want people to understand, people be like, oh, wrestling is fake. In situations like this, no, that wasn't fake. Those were real handcuffs. He was really unprotected and taking nothing but unprotected chair shots. And I know they discussed this because... Mick Foley, he was all about make, making that believability. So he was like, yo, Rock, lay into me. Don't, you know, don't be a bitch about it. Hit me. And The Rock did not hold back. Bruh, this is one of the hardest matches to watch 
because of how many unprotected head chair shots he was taking, bro. Oh, my Mick God. Mick Foley with 10 full force steel chair shots to the head, including oh. some from behind, which is the most dangerous kind of oh chair shot God. you can do it's absolutely horrendous for a number of reasons first uh. the rock went off script with the number of shots and christ how terrifying is that second i didn't even know he went off script with it. i just know they agreed that you know what I'm saying he wanted it to make sure it looked believable you can actually see foley utterly out on his feet trying to protect himself but he can't because he's handcuffed he's in a dangerous environment and physically unable to protect himself that mm -hmm. is so scary and third because foley's wife and kids were there in the crowd in floods of tears just Ugh. Number three, the 2004 Ooh. Royal Rumble match. A good rumble that WWE have committed themselves to erasing from history, which is always super glaring because it's a rumble that's deeply entrenched in their rumble stat. Chris Benoit started the rumble at number one and won the whole uh -huh. thing, which is something that's only happened three times, WWE yep. will tell you, when Shawn Michaels did it, when Edge did it. And what's the third time you ask? Ha <laughs> ha, says WWE. Royal mm -hmm. Rumbles are just fun to watch. To be honest, you could just put all of Chris Benoit's matches on this list. Yep. The WrestleMania 20 main event, the yep. SummerSlam 2004 yep. main event, all stripped from WWE's guided. They're all gone. Obviously, for reasons, you know what I'm saying, what happened with Chris Benoit. So they will never really mention that. They won't tour of its own past for let's be honest completely understandable reasons yeah. but trying to delete the rumble 2004 from a format history that constantly celebrates its many winners over and over again that is the biggest pain in wwe's ass which again is a real shame because as a rumble it's fairly brilliant number two jeff jarrett and deborah versus val venus and nicole bass oh man so if we didn't tell you which event this match took place at you'd be quite right to furrow your brow and say i don't even slightly remember that match even taking place it did it took place at over the edge 1999 and this match yeah. has the very unfortunate distinction of being the first match to take place after the tragic accident that took owen hart's life for those oh. who don't know owen was supposed to be lowered to the ring in his blue blazer gimmick the harness gave way and he fell to the ring below sustaining injuries that cost him his life wwe then made the completely wrong decision to continue continue on with the show with this tag team match. Well, that is terrible oh, wow. enough. It makes it much worse that WWE sent Owen's real life friend, Jeff Jarrett, to the ring to wrestle right after the accident, including cutting a live backstage promo, which has since been removed from the network, along with any other footage of JR breaking the news of Owen's passing, where Jeff looks down the camera, white as a sheet, and says, Owen Hart, I'm praying for you, buddy, before then having to talk about Deborah's puppies. I, I wish I was making that up. Jarrett was then sent through the curtain as Owen was wheeled past him on a stretcher and this entire match is a ghoulish example of WWE ignoring obvious trauma in the name of an attitude that has plagued wrestling throughout the years. The show has to go on. It really doesn't. And number one, draw. Uh, yeah, I think he should have definitely canceled the show. I know that was a time period where they was like, nah, you know, potentially issuing refunds and stuff, but the dude died. Dude legitimately died, bro. They knew he died, and they kept the show going. Oh, man. Oz versus D'Lo Brown. I mean, yes. I that Any anti-WWE rhetoric and the sensationalist title of this video to one side, this match will never be shown, should never be shown. Not WWE's fault. It's no one's fault. Sometimes terrible accidents happen. And on October 5th, 1999, oh. mm. a terrible accident happened when Droz wrestled D'Lo Brown for a SmackDown taping. D'Lo couldn't get purchased on Droz's shirt. A powerbomb was botched, which resulted in Droz being paralyzed. Darren Drozdov has regained some use of his arms and upper oh, body wow. in 20 years since the accident. They've actually met up at wrestling events since, like one in 2018. Damn. But yeah, in amongst all the outrage and opinions and sarcasm and comment sections, this is a brutal industry where the wrong thing can happen at any Damn. given moment Didn't and you occasionally that. have to take a moment to put some power on that. The match itself was taped, will never air, with the only glimpse of it ever being broadcast being a shot in a Don't Try This At Home vignette showing officials lifting the stretcher with draws on it off the canvas, accompanied by the chilling words, careers ended in an instant. And Damn, that's bro. our list. Uh, it doesn't... That shit ended kind of uh, <laughs> morbid. It was so sad and depressing. I did not know that that last one. Man, bro, uh, like they say, like we try to preach to you guys, if unless you're trying to actually be become a wrestler, do not try this stuff at home. People keep thinking, oh, it's all fake. No, there's a lot of stuff that they do is real. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt yourself. You can hurt someone else. You could potentially paralyze yourself or potentially kill yourself doing some of these things this is why they say don't do it at home no matter how many times people say oh it's fake no 
you gotta be careful what you're doing because ultimately these guys even they sometimes get injured and they're professionals they do this for a living so but yeah man comment down below let me know what part of uh this video um when it comes to uh matches that's uh wwe does not want to be seen what part shocked you the most what part did you you know you didn't know about or uh which particular match did you know about or whatnot for me the last one with d'lo brown that shocked me the most because i didn't you know i didn't know that was a, a that even happened so i know just to <clears throat> just to know you paralyzed someone not intentionally but paralyzed them it's not even oh you ended their wrestling career you ended them from being able to walk again normally that that sucks that is that is a hard thing to to really process so that was the most shocking moment for me personally because i didn't know that so comment down below let me know what was the most shocking moment from this video if you didn't know some of these matches or if you did so appreciate all love and support road to 60k appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace